Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings and I quickly stopped in here to the greenhouse today and I wanted to take you for a walk through some of the shrub houses. I know I did this a couple weeks ago and the color was fabulous, but what I'm finding is it wasn't done there. The color is just continuing to get better and better. Uh, so we're gonna walk through about four or five different areas and I'm gonna show you what the shrubs are looking like right now. In this greenhouse, we have a lot of our butterfly bush or budlia, and pretty much they're done flowering, but you can see the remnants of all the flowers that were. Um, this one here actually is blue chip, and there's a couple little flowers still remaining. Uh, but these guys, they put on a really heavy flower show this fall. Uh, these were just planted this summer, so midsummer, and you can see how big they are now and you can just see how full of blooms they were. And these were planted up from the quart size container. So when you order a quart size container, um, you know, let's say you planted it midsummer, I'm guessing that they might be about this big now. So certainly with the Budlia to order a quart size container, um, they're fast growers. So there are some shrubs, if you were to call and ask if you should do a quart or a gallon, I may uh, lead you in one direction or the other. And basically why I would lead you in one direction or the other is based off of the growth rate of that particular plant. Uh, but certainly if you were calling and kind of hesitating back and forth between a gallon or a quart of the Budlia, I would probably tell you, you know, if you don't want to spend the money for a gallon, a quart should do fine for you. Also in this greenhouse, we have a lot of our evergreens. And that's where you're seeing a lot of the yellow color coming in right now. Um, here we have some Montana moss. That's a juniper. And they have just a little touch of kind of burgundy to the tips. That's the new growth. We've got the tortuga. So this also is a juniper. And you can see how that's got almost a little bit more of a solid burgundy look to it. The Anna's Magic Ball, they're definitely very yellow right now in the winter. Uh, also showing a lot of yellow is the Arborvitae. This is the Fluffy. I love the texture of Fluffy. Let's go in and take kind of a closer look. If you look there at the texture, you can kind of see how it gets its name uh, because really the foliage is very fluffy. And I love this color. So if you're looking to add, you know, some evergreen interest, but also that has like really great foliage color, the fluffy may be something for your garden. Uh, if you'll want to look on the website so you can get all the zone and height information, um, as I'm walking through the greenhouse, it's kind of hard for me to remember. There's probably 300 and some plants out here. So for me to remember all the zone and uh, heights and stuff is hard to do. So if I mention a plant, just head over to gardencrossings.com and check out the information as far as hardiness and uh, height. Uh, here we have the rhododendron. This is black cat. And look at that great fall foliage. And those are gonna get really pretty lavender flowers like you can see on the tag in the spring. So I think the neat thing with shrubs is there's so many shrubs that you just maybe don't even think of as something beautiful for fall color. So I'm hoping by walking through the greenhouses, this will kind of help you see you know, not, not only that the plants are beautiful flowering plants, uh, like this purple haze buddleia. You can see the habit of this. It's kind of a uh, up and over looking butterfly. Kind of has that drooping type branch. Uh, but so like I said, not only do you can see the flower color, but also that they have great uh, foliage interest in the cooler weather. Let's head on over to another greenhouse. So the greenhouse we're entering now, this is our hydrangea greenhouse. Most of the hydrangeas in here are gonna be part of like the paniculata or the hardy hydrangeas or part of the smooth um, arborescence hydrangea family. Um, so as we walk along, I'm just gonna kind of quickly name everyone because I know this is gonna be something I'm gonna get a lot of questions on since there is so much color in this greenhouse. Um, also what we're finding is you know, you might see a little variation based off of where they're placed in the greenhouse. So for example, these here are firelight and they're right by the door. So they're getting a little bit more heat than the firelight here, which are a little bit more in the greenhouse where it's not quite as warm. Uh, but firelight not only has those beautiful magenta pink flowers in the fall, you can see this foliage here is amazing as well. 
Now I do need to point out that these are all in a greenhouse right now, so they're very protected. So if you, you know, you might start getting the foliage color, but if you get some wind, it could easily blow all the leaves off your, your plant. So it won't be sitting here, you know, holding onto this color maybe as long as what it is doing here in the greenhouse. So this whole block here is still firelight, that beautiful color. The next color, uh, next block we're coming to, these are the limelight hydrangeas. Now, not quite as much color there as the firelight, uh, but definitely some really sh pretty shades of that yellow and orange and even a little bit of red here. Um, you're seeing some holes. So that's because we have been shipping out of these uh, greenhouses this fall as well. Um, as long as other as well as other greenhouses uh, so that's why you're seeing some holes so what we're waiting for is once it does get cold enough and they drop all their leaves we'll come through here and pick up every single pot remove remove any leaves that have fallen you know down on the soil level because we don't want them there because that just is um, you know harbors diseases and stuff when you keep the old leaves so we're gonna make sure every single leaf is off these plants and off the pot come through like a leaf blower and blow all the leaves that are on the ground and trim them if they need a little trim that way they're ready to go for spring this next block is the little quick fire hydrangea and look at the color difference there so this one by far is the most burgundy red color um, almost even black on some of these leaves. It's just, it's so unique to see how all these hydrangeas, even though they're all part of that um, panicle family, they all have that different fall color going on, which I guess is true of any, you know, tree. Think of about a maple tree. They all have a little bit of different colors going on, even though they're all still a maple tree. Um, so yeah, little quick fire, really beautiful. The next batch we're coming to is Limelight Prime. And you can see that there is some color here, but these were quicker to drop their leaves. So there's not quite as much impact right now because a lot of the leaves are on the ground. But I think it's really pretty how we're seeing, you know, a little bit of that flower still trying to flower up. And that looks really pretty. Actually, I think it looks odd almost with those white flowers up against the red foliage. This next little area here is Pinky Winky, and there's a lot of that deep burgundy, almost black going on here as well. In the back corner are the oak leaf hydrangeas. This here is Gatsby's Pink. We'll cross the aisle to see Gatsby's Moon and Gatsby's Gale. So that is like almost near black foliage on those oak leaves. Oak leaves are grown for the fall foliage color. So that is one that, you know, people probably know, like, yeah, oak leaf hydrangeas, they're grown for that fall color. That certainly is the case. This next little batch we're walking through definitely has lost all of its leaves at this point. And this is the little lime punch hydrangea. So for whatever reason, this one and the limelight prime don't hold their leaves as long. Uh, also, Bobo is what we're coming across right now. Bobo too. Pretty much all of the leaves have fallen to the ground. Certainly there is one thing when we're looking at these panicle hydrangeas is there is a size hydrangea for every garden. So if it's just a patio you're working with or if it's a grandiose huge landscape, there is a hydrangea for every single gardener. Uh, if it's a two foot variety or a 10 foot variety, there is certainly one for you. This next batch here is the little lime hydrangea and there's a lot of flowers on these plants you can see. And again, I think it looks kind of different, maybe unique, I don't know, with those flowers with that bright red fall foliage. Kind of pretty, I guess. It's just something that you don't see normally. The next batch here is a quick fire fab. And that too's got really nice burgundy near black foliage. And then the last little batch is the firelight tidbit. And although there's quite a few flowers showing on these, 
a lot of the leaves have already fallen. So Firelight Tidbit is the smallest of the paniculata hydrangeas that we carry, or hardy hydrangeas. And I would, I'm gonna say Limelight is probably the tallest in the series. Let's head on over to the next greenhouse. So as we look at this greenhouse, there's a lot of yellows going on, a little bit of red and black. And at the way end, there's a ton of flowers. So let's take a look. This is another greenhouse that has um, hydrangeas, but there's also a lot of other unique shrubs in this greenhouse. So this first batch we're seeing here is the incredible hydrangea. And obviously, I don't know my opinion, but this doesn't have anything really to write home about as far as the fall foliage. I think it's more those hardy hydrangeas that we were just in the greenhouse of um, that have more impressive fall color. So some people have also asked me, um, why are leaves spotted and why do they just, you know, they, that doesn't look good. Well, it's because they're going dormant and they're just, they're getting ready to die off the plant. Doesn't mean that the plant is sick, not healthy. It just means that those leaves are pretty much done and ready to drop and the plant will flush out with beautiful green foliage again next spring. Invincible Lace pretty much has dropped all of its leaves. Um, Invincible Garnetta, again, the leaves really aren't too exciting, um, but it is giving us a really pretty show of some of the flowers. Now again, these flowers are not a good representation of what the color of the flower is when they're growing in the summer. Um, these, it's been cold in here, 40s, uh, 50s, maybe even lower. So these plants are really struggling to put that flower out. So although it gives us a pretty little show here in the fall, winter, it's probably not exactly the colors you're gonna see when it's in your garden. Next we have the Invincible Limetta and all the leaves have fallen off of these. A lot of flowers still remain. The flowers are starting to fade as well. So again, this, this isn't pretty, but you can see these were planted up in quartz middle of summer and in the fall, how many flowers these plants gave. So, I mean, that's for that small little quart that was planted into a gallon, that's a lot of flower coverage for just maybe a month or two of growth. Next, we have the Invincible Ruby Hydrangeas. And look at all the flowers on there. This is so pretty. You can see there's a lot of variation on the Invincible Ruby Hydrangeas, and that is true even when it gets in the landscape. So as the flowers emerge, they're kind of a deeper pink color. And then as the flowers age, they're gonna lighten up. So that's where you're seeing kind of a lot of different transition of color in this in this block of plants is because this flower does go through transitions when it is out in the landscape as well. Invincible Wee White. A lot of flowers there. Here's a bigger specimen of Invincible Wee White. And these plants, they probably have even had a trim on them they're about 24 inches tall. So planted in, I believe they were planted in August. So when I say summer, I believe it was the beginning of August that these got planted. So from August through the fall, this is how big they've gotten. Now, if they were planted outside here in Michigan, obviously they wouldn't be this big because I would say our growing season probably ended somewhere, oh, mid to late October is what I'm thinking we got our frost. So they definitely have had an extended season here in the greenhouse where they're protected and warm, uh, but not warm because of heat we're giving them. It's warm because of if the sun comes out, the greenhouses obviously do get warm. So, but what we'll do is we'll come through here once they drop all their leaves. We're gonna cut them back to about eight inches or so, cutting off all those flowers. Uh, invincible, um, incredible, all those smooth hydrangeas. They all bloom off of the new growth. So we can come through here and trim them back as far as we want, and they're still gonna flower for you next uh, year when you get these plants. So that's a really nice thing with the smooth hydrangeas is they're very reliable. You don't have to worry about if you trim them at the wrong time, they're gonna bloom off of whatever new growth um, they get. 
Over here, we've got some of the Invincible Mini Maw Vets. Now, Mini Maw Vet seems to have a little bit more interest, I guess you might say, in the foliage. There's a little bit more burgundy going on here, along with the yellow. Uh, and I can tell this spot here might be a little bit more of a hot spot because you can see that there are blocks of plants that are still fairly green, so they're not totally transitioned into the whole yellow state yet. So if I had to guess, there's probably a little bit of a hot spot right there. The next block we're seeing is Incredible Blush, and there's a lot of beautiful flowers here on the Incredible Blush. Incredible Blush is another one where the flowers go through some color transformation as they're blooming out in the landscape, starting off a little bit darker and then lightening up as they mature and age. Uh, and by mature and age, I mean the flowers mature and age, not the plant. Invincible Spirit is right here. There's a couple little flower buds, but they're probably not going to make it to flower form. Uh, just too cold for that. We've got some spireas. Spireas are really pretty for the fall. Uh, you can see that beautiful color there of the spirea glow girl, kind of that electric orange red color. Next to it here is double play doozy. And double play doozy too, you can see there's a little bit of color difference going on based off of if it's closer to the center of the greenhouse or closer to the edge. Uh, one thing is for sure, double play doozy, even in the summer, it's gonna get those beautiful red tips on the new growth. So it's definitely very pretty in the summer with different colors going on. But in the fall, you're gonna notice how it takes on kind of more of those fiery fall colors with even more color of that bright red magenta, some of that fiery orange, orangey magenta. Really a beautiful, color there on the double play doozy. So spireas are certainly a very easy landscape plant to grow. They've got the flower interest, they've got foliage interest. Pretty much all of them have a little bit of where the, the tips are a different color as the new growth emerges. So you get a little bit of that bicolor foliage on most of the spirea. Um, here's actually a flower of doozy. And that is gorgeous. Actually, let's go in closer. So if we look at that flower and then you see the little, the little tips, they're purple. That is so pretty. I'll have to come back and take a picture of that when I'm done doing, a video, doing the video. The next one we have here is the double play red. And the red is the flower color. That's what that's referring to. But look at the foliage. Great red fall foliage here on this double play red spirea. The next one we have is double play gold. And double play gold spirea is kind of a chartreuse green in the summer. A little bit of the tips get kind of that yellow, but you can see the fall color here is mostly kind of that golden, golden yellow. Double play artisan, we got a couple of those in here as well. Nice fall color. Double play candy corn. So candy corn, certainly my opinion, has nice, much nicer color foliage in the season. So spring, summer. It's got the yellow with the orange, Kind of, I mean, candy corn really describes it well. Um, a lot of that fall color going on with the double plate candy corn during the spring and summer. Here it's fall color or it's cold weather color. It's pretty much yellow. So definitely more impressive during the heat of the season. Double plate kaz blue kazoo has really nice fall foliage. Oranges, that hot magenta pink color. Really pretty. Double play Big Bang kind of is going more towards the yellow shades. So maybe not quite as impressive. I tea a little Henry. So this is a different plant. 
Um, Itea Little Henry is a great plant. Uh, spring bottle brush white flowers. In the fall, it gets really like red orange like a burning bush. Usually by that point, we lose our leaves because of the wind or whatever. But because of being here in this protected greenhouse, I see a little Henry has near black foliage. So again, it may not get this dark out in the landscape because the wind or such might blow the leaves off by this point, but that is gorgeous. The next plant here is the Arctic Sun Dogwood. So this is primarily grown for its uh, twigs for the winter interest. Uh, it's pretty much a green plant during the season, but in the winter, let's see if we can get in and find one that's lost its leaves. Here's one. You can see how bright magenta that twig is. So as this plant gets bigger, obviously, it's going to have a lot more twigs. And can you imagine a shrub with that intense magenta twig in your garden? And if you're somewhere where it gets snow, Imagine how that would just glow against the white snow. Um, I certainly need to plant probably an Arctic Sun in my yard. Uh, I had Arctic Fire Red before and it got too big for its location, so we dug it out. Uh, but I think Arctic, Arctic Sun, I'm gonna try to go for one of those in my landscape just so I have twigs to cut for my winter porch pots. Speaking of Arctic Fire Red, here is Arctic Fire Red. And these have pretty much all lost their leaves. And you can see why it's called Arctic Fire Red, because of the beautiful red twigs. So this here is another plant that is uh, grown primarily for its twigs for winter interest. And again, that is a gorgeous plant up against the snow here in the north. Let's go take a walk and, and see what's in the next greenhouse. So I think this will be the last greenhouse I'll walk through for today. Um, I have about another acre to go through, and I think I'll save that for another day for another video. Uh, but we're gonna walk through here and check out all the pretty shrubs going on in here. So there's a whole bunch of different shrub families going on in here. So um, yeah, listen closely, stop the video if there's one that you are interested in, uh, because I'm gonna be probably mentioning a lot of names. So this first one here is the Caryopteris Beyond Midnight. This is a great, great fall flowering plant. Beautiful purple, um, blue flowers. And I do have a video of just this plant specifically if you wanna reference it on YouTube. Uh, but right now for fall foliage, not a whole lot to talk about. The next one here is the Caryopteris Beyond Pinked which is also another great, great fall foliage plant. Beautiful pink flowers that line the stems. Uh, fall foliage doesn't look like it really does much. The Dervilla, this is Kodiak Black, excellent plant for fall foliage. So you can see there's a lot of variations going on here from yellows to reds to near black. Uh, it just kind of depends on where it's at in its transition. But during the season, this plant actually has really pretty near black uh, foliage. So it's kind of black and green. And then now that it's winter, it's taking on even more fall colors. This here is Physocarpus festivus gold, which has like chartreuse greens during the summer. And now in the fall here, it's got beautiful yellow foliage. Ginger wine is the next one, which has really pretty kind of um, coppery foliage in the season. But in the fall here, you can see it's taken on even more red. Summer wine is another nine bark that during the season has black foliage. Here it's fiery red. So there is a lot of plants in here, so I'm probably not going to name every single one unless it's got some significant uh, fall foliage. Here we've got the tiny wine, which has black foliage in the summer, and it's got kind of a coppery orange foliage right now. Summer wine black, which has black foliage in the summer. It has a little bit of a rosy pink look to it here in the fall. The next one that looks like it has some interest 
is the Lil Diddy Viburnum. This is a very compact Viburnum that gets beautiful white flowers on it in the summer. And here in the fall, it's got kind of black, burgundy, and red to its foliage. Red Balloon Viburnum, a little bit of burgundy black going on there. Spice Baby Viburnum has a little bit of kind of a coppery red. Steady Eddie Viburnum, this is kind of doing a really cool look with a veining on there. So green foliage, but you can see how as it's changing, you're seeing a little bit of that veining. That looks pretty. We talked about Spice Baby. Here we have Spice Girl. And this has got kind of that burgundy and fiery red. Next to it is Sweet Talker Viburnum. And that's got some really nice foliage as well. The next one that really stands out here, this is Wajila Sonic Bloom Pink. So that is some pretty intense foliage. Now this is normally green during the summer, but you can see it's got that beautiful yellow with that red and the veining going on is gorgeous. We'll see if this changes as we hit different Sonic Bloom colors. So right now this is still all Sonic Bloom Pink that we're walking past. It is gonna change. So the next block here is Sonic Bloom Red, and you can see how that's got a little bit more of that deeper reddish burgundy. There's some flowers trying to happen. Sonic Bloom Pearl really isn't doing a whole lot as far as changing. Checkmark Trilogy is gorgeous. Look at that foliage, wow, that is so red. And you can see how there's a little bit of variation based off of hot spots and cold spots, but man, that is impressive. Uh, we'll cross the aisle and we'll have uh, my Monet purple effect. And this is really doing a pretty, kind of a transparent on the edge with that burgundy and that pink. That is really pretty. Next to it is Sonic Bloom Pure Pink, which is not doing a whole lot. I mean, kind of a little bit of yellow going on there, but not really fall, fall colors. Snippet Dark Pink. That's taking on a little bit of the yellow and the red. It's a compact plant. Next to it, we have the Spilled Wine Wajila, which has the near black foliage during the season and it's it's doing a little bit of kind of magenta orange but it's almost like the black is taking on a little bit more of that deep 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 red in the foliage uh, we've got very fine wine and we're seeing some different colors going on and that's because some of these were out in the garden center this fall and the others were here in the greenhouse so some were in warmer areas than others before they got brought back here. Midnight Wine Shine. Maybe a little bit redder than the dark foliage it normally has. Oh, this one is, oh, Wajila Vino, uh, Vino Verde. So this is a new one for next year. Obviously I can't show you much about it because it's definitely all um, crispy leaves so they're all falling off so I missed the opportunity to show you what that one looked like Kodiak orange Dervilla oh my goodness gorgeous so the yellow is almost like a transparent yellow and then there's a little bit of that magenta red on the edges that is gorgeous Wow Next one here showing us a little color is uh, Wajila Midnight Sun. So this is a new variety for 2022. It's not online yet. It'll be online uh, January 1. But this shirt is going to be a gorgeous Wajila as well. My Monet Sunset is got a little bit of color there. 
prettier in the summer though for sure honeysuckle sensations really not doing a whole lot uh, temple of bloom this is the seven sunflower this has got a little bit of the burgundy going on not super fall color i mean it's pretty that burgundy is pretty don't get me wrong but i'm not seeing a whole lot of the beautiful reds and oranges uh, but this is a great shrub that can be trained into tree form and that's something that you would need to do so when we ship it it's going to be more of a shrub form and then if you want to train it into tree form you would kind of find like the most prominent um, stem and then use that as your your trunk and trim off of it to create that tree form look simply sensational this is a sweet shrub that's lost pretty much all its foliage now um, but we can see that that had really nice yellow aphrodite is not quite as impressive of color i'll kind of do a side by side simply, simply sensational definitely has more yellow going on and the barberries oh wow sunjoy tangelo this thing if this was fire it would be hot look at that so much red wow uh, Sunjoy Neon, uh, Neo, maybe it should be called Neon. It's got a little bit more of that uh, magenta, gorgeous. Uh, Sunjoy Sequins, this is kind of unique. Let's go in closer here. See how you can kind of see like that. I'm going to say tie-dye for lack of other word, but gorgeous variation there. Sunjoy Mini Saffron. The edges of it are really pretty. Mini maroon. A little bit of red going on there. Gold pillar is looking gorgeous. Really beautiful orange. Sunjoy Toto. Another one. If this was a fire, it would be hot. That is gorgeous red. My goodness. And then the last one here is the Sunjoy Citrus. So you can see some variation going on, but the ones that are further along, really a beautiful kind of burnt orange color. We've seen a lot of different color today with a lot of different shrub families. So I think that um, this gives you a good uh, representation of what a lot of shrubs do here in the fall. Again, they're in the greenhouse, so there's a little bit of protection going on, uh, but a lot of gorgeous color potentials with some of these shrubs. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, indoor tour today. We'll go through and tour the rest of the greenhouses to show you the fall color in that area. Uh, but for today, I think this will do it. Uh, if there's any questions you have on any of these shrubs we saw today, leave your comments below. I'd love to see them. If you're not a subscriber, a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. That way you get notified when we post our next video. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.